In this example, we will be making a little die, a little cube right here. We got numbers on all the sides. So you can make it interesting by changing the font. You can see I made the four with a different font. I made the six. I spelt it out because it fit on there. So let's start out by making a new cube. So file, new part. Let's do this in inches, standard inches. Hit create. So to make a cube, hit the start sketch, hit my face, let's make it a one and a half inch cube. So it's going to be 1.5 inches, hit tab, 1.5 inches, hit enter. So that's my one and a half inch by one and a half inch square, finish that sketch. To make it a cube, of course we need to make it 3D, so we extrude it. And bring it up 1.5 inches. So now we have a nice cube. From here, you're going to be drawing on each of the six faces to put your numbers on there. So for each face, start sketch, click your face, put your number on, finish sketch. So a couple ways we can do this. We could on a standard die, you've got little dots, little circles. So remember if I come over here across the way until that circle turns green, I know I'm right in the middle. And I can come down. I can also just put it anywhere. Let's make it 0.25 inches. And I can use the dimension tool to put it exactly where I want. So click the center of the circle, click an edge, and half of 1.5 is 0.75, and hit enter. So now that's halfway down here. I still have the dimension tool, click the center, click the top line, click. One neat trick is I can click this dimension right here without typing anything and it will copy that dimension. So hit enter. So you see this fx equals 0 0.750. Cool thing about that is if I want to change this one to 0.125 for some reason, it will automatically change that one. So those two will copy each other. Otherwise I can just type in 0 0.75. So hit finish sketch. So that is the one side. And hit extrude, click my circle, and I can cut it. Now I probably don't want to cut it all the way through because on the other side I have my six, and that's not good. So I can change this to say, let's bring it down an eighth of an inch. So I can put one over eight, or I can put 1.125. So that's just going to indent it just very slightly. You could even do less than that if you wanted to. So let's come over here to my other face. Start sketch. Click over here. Now let's say for two. I'm going to put a line across the middle. So that way. When I use my circle, I can line up 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So I know that those are perfectly along that diagonal axis. I can make my dimension the same from the top. Click the center, click the top. Let's put it at, uh, let's say, 3 eighths of an inch. And from this one to the bottom at 3 eighths of an inch. That way it just lines up perfectly. Finish sketch, extrude, click both, click cut, put it in a quarter of an inch. So there's my two. So if we want to do some text. We can do dots all the way around 
The next one I'll show you some text. So if I click here, so this one's going to be three. Because remember, on a normal die, each face and its opposite add up to seven. So I know that I'm going to have one, a two, a three. That's all going to work out. So the opposites are all add up to seven. So let's put some text here. I know that this is an inch and a half tall because when I created it, I know it's an inch and a half tall. So my text, click the text button, click over here. If I just type in three, hit OK, it's going to be pretty small. So I'm going to do that. If I click over here, the size right here, if I drop this down, these are just kind of default standard sizes. I can come over here and I can type in, I don't want the full inch and a half, let's just type in one inch. Right here is my font, I can change it. So, do, 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 do. I like the copper plate. It's pretty. And let's put a three. And hit OK. So there's my three. Now that's up in the corner. It's hard to justify where it is before you click it, so I'm going to use the move button. The move button is kind of confusing at first. It's not just a simple click and drag. So click move, and it's just like a lot of these things, it's a two step process. So first I have to select, and I have to pick a base point and move it. So select, select my shape. Click base point. And here I'm going to click somewhere on here. So let's click the top corner. And now I just click the top corner and now I can move it wherever. So that looks good. Done. So I finished my sketch on that one. So there's a three. Now this three right here, I can use all of these tools just like normal. So I can use this extrude click it, cut in 0.125, hit OK. So that's going to take that 3 and that's going to extrude it in there. So let's go to this phase, so that's a 2, so it needs to add to 7, so this is going to be a 5. So another thing I can do with that text tool is I can click, change this to point Sorry. Make it one inch tall. Let's do Rockwell condense. I can type in five. All right, so that's not going to fit on my block. So I can use this scale button also. Select my piece, just like move, two steps. Select like base point, click a piece. Looks good right there. Done. Move. Click. Base point. Click. Down. Done. So that's my five. I know I went through that kind of quick, so let's undo that and show you that again. So that's too big. Click my scale. It's a two-step process. First is to select. Click. Go to base point. Click. Pick anywhere on here, hit click, and now I can move my mouse around until it fits. Hit done. Move. Click. Base point. Click. Click. Done. Finish sketch. So that five, I can extrude again. There's also this option right here to emboss. What that will do is if you have like a curved surface that you wanted this 5 to go on, you can emboss it in there. So I want it to go in, let's say 0.1 inches, hit OK. And it'll do just about the same thing as extrude. So you can figure out how to do the other sides, the 4 and the 6, make it however you want. So these edges right here are very sharp. We want to change those a bit. So we're going to use the fillet tool or the chamfer tool. 
So they do very similar things. What a chamfer does is if I click this and I click my edge and I hit apply, what that's going to do is right here, it's going to cut that off at a 45 degree angle. So if I do all these edges, that's going to be an error. Hit apply. Come over here, I can click all of these edges, and it will do all the math and everything for me. Hit apply. So I have a nice, crisp 45 degree angle right there. If you want to soften it up a little bit and make it rounded, you use the fillet tool. So very similar to the chamfer, you click your edge, and instead of a straight 45 degree angle, it's going to round that over with an arc, part of a circle. So I can come through and I can click on all my edges. Hit apply. So my five comes through here a little bit. That's okay. If you want, you can always change it. I can go back to this one right here. I emboss, right click, edit sketch. I want to make it a little bit smaller. Hit that scale, click, base point, scale. Let's bring it there, done. I can also rotate it to make it fit. Same thing. Two steps. Click. Center point is where I'm going to rotate it around. Click. Click. Done. Move. Click. Base point. Done. Now when I hit finish sketch, it's going to automatically update it all. So that's how you make a die. Real quick. You can figure out how to make you know, a six-sided die is the normal one. You can make a three-sided die. You can make a 20-sided die. You can do all those things pretty simple in Inventor. So you can figure that out and make a cool design. Remember, you always want to save it. File, Save As. I'm just going to save it. Save it to your H drive. Dice 2. And then to export it for the 3D printer, File, Export. CAD format, save as type, you're going to go down all the way to the bottom, STL, you're going to go to options, change units to millimeters, it may or may not be in millimeters, millimeters is what the 3D printers generally default to, so if you do it to millimeters, it'll print out the right size, and then your resolution, make sure your resolution is set to either medium or high, for something small like this, you're probably not going to notice any difference between medium and high, but you do not do low or the prep right here. So medium, hit OK, hit save. So now I can go into my 3D printing software, either Affinia Studio or MakerBot, and import that STL to print out your die.